This is Performers Wanted. And we are live. Welcome to a very special episode of Performers Wanted. I normally, I know this is like weird. I'm normally really somber, but I'm super excited <laughs> with this because, because we have a few guests and we are shedding light on a different uh, form of performing, different, you know, in quotations, because um, I, I've been inter- interviewing a lot of different uh, musical theater performers and that has not really changed. But but most people I do know who do a musical theater also do this type of performing. We are doing uh, theme park performers today, and it is specifically the House of Mouse, happiest place on earth. So we got we got a couple uh, performers here who uh, are uh, friendly with some folks at the uh, at the House of yeah, Mouse. You can say that. <laughs> yeah, we'll say, I'll say we'll say friendly with with uh, some of your beloved characters. Um, so we have Nicolette Medley and we have Bryant Melton here today. How are you guys doing? I am, for it, Brian. <laughs> I am so tired. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just got same. off of, I got off work at midnight, uh, last night, uh, working an event. So, uh, luckily, uh, when my fiance went off to work, I was like, ah, I, <clears throat> I have podcast and I jumped up <laughs> out of bed. <laughs> oh, in a similar but very different fashion i am not only a disney performer but also um a mom of two (laughs) and my husband is home today and he tried to be sweet and let me sleep in but little did he know today (laughs) was not the day for that so Mm -hmm. 8 50 rolls around and i'm like same thing oh my god podcast no let's (laughs) i gotta gotta hurry so i'm feeling hardcore yeah yeah i definitely have a day ahead of me is as well. Um, I normally do this early, but normally when I do it early, it's not for any other reason other than like time zones. A lot of folks that I interview are um, from New York, oh, you know, yeah. they're like, they're That's like dope. in it. So just like, yeah, yeah. so I got to get up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's you. Yeah. To get up. <laughs> so, yeah. Re- reason to get up. So I was like, oh, I got to get up. So like, it was a little bit easier for me to kind of get up and jump in on this, but uh yeah so for anyone who's listening uh specifically you know theme park performances uh especially disney and universal are very very much like they keep things under wraps and this is for you guys the audience this is for you guys just not to lose the magic so certain things we you know we might not go as deep as you might want to but we're still gonna we're still gonna talk about it. it's still gonna be fun and this is gonna be maybe for like folks who want to do it themselves you know this is kind of you know the point of this podcast has been that kind of like for the people who are pursuing it to kind of hear people who are kind of in it you know so i guess with the most vague question i can (laughs) ask um you know if you can kind of like go and introduce yourselves and maybe how long you have been a member of the house of mouse we might be able to go into that and then see where we go from there uh since uh in my little like screen right here bryant you're right next to me uh we'll have you go first sure um i have been working uh for for disney for almost eight years uh it'll be eight years next wow. month wow. um i've held uh knowledges in almost all the disciplines except for parades that's been the one that uh the one that i haven't held knowledge which is funny enough because those were the first two auditions that i went for were for parade auditions Mm. um and so now uh sort of honed down what i do specifically so now i uh i do training as well as some of my uh current roles that i hold within the park Mm. okay Nicolette, what about you? So I have been with the company. It will be 10 years in January. Dang. Um, yeah. With with the little leave of absence that was COVID. Um, mm-hmm, of but course. that wasn't my count. fault. That was against my will. So we don't, I don't count that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it'll be 10 years in January, which is insane. And, you know, I've had a fun journey where I started at Disneyland and then moved over to Walt Disney World for four years, and then Mm -hmm. now I'm back at Disneyland. So I've had, like, a really cool experience of getting to see, um, because even though they're the same company, it's so different. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I've gone from, yeah, basically 
most of what you can do in entertainment, which has been exciting um, from, you know, character side to parade side to uh, like show side. Um, so it's been it's been a, a fun journey and it's been exciting to grow uh, along yeah. with the company. So yeah, yeah, Nicolette, you've done the most. I've, like, I've seen. Yeah, I've I've seen. It was just like, oh, you're doing this. Wait. Yeah, and now and now this and now. This. So and it's been now it's this. been fun. Now this, yes, I will take this time right here while we're on the air to congratulate you on your newest addition to the family. <laughs> Thank um, you. Thank she's still you. little enough, so I can I can congratulate. She's yeah. still little enough. <laughs> Definitely, she's still she's still fresh enough. So <laughs> she just really got Congrats. here. Yeah, you thank know. you. Um, so my you know my idea initially was to uh, was to do this, but to kind of like take someone from each of like the the major like SoCal theme parks and kind of have them like talk to each other. And I may do that later on down the line. But, you know, for the sake of longevity, and there are a decent amount of, you know, Southern California theme parks, figured I'd start with here first. Um, you know, it's it's very interesting. I, you know, I don't go to the park that often. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> last time I went was coming up on a year ago. I think the last time I was there before that was a year before that um because <laughs> it, it is it is a lot in the day and i think the last time i went i was still like severely like severely like injured but it was like oh anniversary time let's start with time to go and i was like we need yeah. to go as much as we possibly can <laughs> so by the end of it i was like dragging myself oh. like across <laughs> the, i'm just like oh uh, we're gonna still. have a good time <laughs> I bet you just all right. <laughs> we need star tours. So magical. <laughs> you know what it is, but um but with that saying I with you know the knowledge I do have, I mean, you guys are on your feet. You guys are on your feet. Um I don't know if there's a I don't know if there's anything that you can share, like um, you know, who you like who your closest friends are or anything like that. I don't know if there's anything you can share, like or how long you stuff you can do. But um, you know, as far as that goes, even if you can't share that, you know, how like how long are you on your feet each day you're there? Like what's like how are you feeling by the end of those days? <laughs> <laughs> it for me anyway, it it just kinda depends um and i it kind of depends and i think it also kind of really depends on like the attitude of the day um cuz you know there's some days where i'll be out there and i'm like i'm just dancing around being silly uh you know i'll be i walk all over the place and you know when i get off of work i you know i could be totally fine I'm like oh man today was such a great day cool what else what are we doing today and then there are some days where i get off and i come home and I'm just dog beat tired. I'm like, I'm, my feet hurt. I'm over it. Um, and I was like, I just want to knock out, relax, and not have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, it's, <laughs> I guess, and it also kind of depends on what shoes I'm wearing for the day, mm -hmm. too. You know, mm -hmm. whether I'm wearing a boot or a shoe or, um, you know, and how I'm walking too, because that could also take into account with mm -hmm. how much I'm on my feet. But if I were to, you know, if we were to look at just the amount of time each each time mm -hmm. is, um, probably for three to four hours, mm -hmm. I would say. If I'm I'm gonna try and do some quick math, um, <laughs> so if I do about five sets a day, each one about like. 30-ish minutes, so one hour, two hours, two and a half, so it could be about anywhere, average about three. Certain mm -hmm. certain roles I do more, and certain roles I do less, so I would say probably around three hours of just strictly standing on my feet. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my current role, I mean, you know, we do our thing, and then we're we're done, and our thing can be, what is it, like, just over 30 minutes so mm -hmm. like that you know is is easy but when i was over at walt disney world which you know same they have the same concepts of meet and greets um the indoor locations you know our sets would last 
up to an hour and 15 minutes and we would do about Ooh. six sets a day what um damn yeah and you know on those like during peep season some of our shifts were like 14 hour shifts where they would try to squeeze like seven sets in a day and it was pretty pretty brutal um and then Whoa. again the shoes and the costume you wear heavily impact the way you feel at the end of the day um so say it's a big red ball gown with some gold sparkly heels like that's gonna be <laughs> um a lot more painful at the end of the day than say a, a little a smaller dress or you know with some <laughs> uh, flats on so um it definitely yeah, depends on the shift and what costume you're wearing what location you're at because again like the smaller dress if you're outside which mm -hmm. i'm assuming some of brian's sets are also outside they mm -hmm. do tend to be 30 to 45 minutes shorter mm -hmm. um, than your indoor sets. So yeah, it, it can definitely vary. And then a parade, you know, I can clock 20,000 steps um, in a day and that's tracking one parade. So like, mm -hmm. imagine if I track both parades, um, how many mm -hmm. steps you would get in. So definitely mm -hmm. those can, at the end of the day, just knock you down. <laughs> oh, but it's all so much fun, so, you know. Oh yeah. my Dang. gosh! Fourteen That's, hour days. Mm -hmm. that is, yeah, that is that is insane. Time, it gets a little rough at the Massa House. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, House of Mouse. See, I can't even. I can't even. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, my eyes twitching thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about it, it's like, uh, you know. Um, but we're waiting for you to come back to work. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> so magical. Right? Yeah, wait. <laughs> So, um, for any like, roles that you play, are they uh, are they free roaming or liaison based uh, roles? Uh, all of mine are typically roaming. Um, there are certain there are certain um, like sets throughout the day where I'll have a location that I go and perform at, mm -hmm. but um, for the most part. A lot of what I do, I do have the luxury of being able to roam around, which is something that I prefer mm -hmm. um, as a performer too, because it allows, <clears throat> excuse me, it allows me to be able to uh, keep like keep interactions fresh, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. for me, like if I'm in the same location, I notice that uh, like a lot of the bits and a lot of the things that I try to do start getting more repetitive than if I'm roaming around. Because if I'm roaming mm -hmm. around, I can. You know, I can make jokes about the environment. I can make, uh, you know, more people are walking by. So I can, you know, as I'm talking, I could just throw something to a guest who's walking by and be like, hey, yeah, you know, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, and then <laughs> sort of keep going. Um, so it's just a lot more or are uh, roaming around. And then I have a few who are location based. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you, Nicolette? Um. Yeah, so I don't think I've ever had a character that got to roam around. Um, mm. I wish that <laughs> I watch it and I'm like, how fun. Um, Florida, that does not exist because um, the guests mm. out there are a little bit more. Um, <laughs> we like to say that they're not they're not as tamed as Disneyland. <laughs> uh, That's you know, wild. And, and it tends to be Disney World is definitely like the. Um, like they say Disneyland's a vacation destination, but Disney World is a vacation destination. Like mm -hmm. people from all over the world are coming. And Disneyland, you look at it when you get to see both, it's definitely more for the locals. Like, yes, of course mm -hmm. we get people from out of state, but it is very much mostly local people. Mm -hmm. Um so they just kinda know, like, hey, the characters walking by, we're gonna like follow their lead and not everybody does because some people are still like, you know, mm -hmm. stop for me and take my picture mm -hmm. and do that. But Disney World, mm -hmm. like you will get mauled. Like yeah. nobody knows to just watch you. Like oh, so, okay. um, it is interesting to see. But I did get to do a couple when I was at Disneyland, um, because I used to work the Restaurant Plaza Inn, which was like my favorite location to work. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the end, they would make us do like a roaming set at Tomorrowland, which was like looking back at it, like such a terrible idea i don't know if they still do that like i'm like who thought of this like this is yeah like this is the like why would you see two giant rodents from walking around tomorrowland i will never know um, but <laughs> for whatever reason they had us doing that and i've 
like worked there for so long and there was only a few leads that would be like you're gonna go do the Tomorrowland set and everybody else was like just go pack up like you know you're done <laughs> but every time we did the Tomorrowland set I was like but I have to prepare myself because Tomorrowland is like the most crime land it feels like at Disneyland mm -hmm. all the time right. it's like a million and ten people and then you put two giant characters in there mm -hmm. um so that was always hectic and we would just like beeline it like we had point a point b and we just like beeline it to point b mm -hmm. um and get out of there but um when i see like how a true roaming set works i'm like that's so magical like whenever i go as a guest and see the characters i'm like this mm -hmm. is so like this is disneyland like they're literally mm -hmm. just here like they're you know mm -hmm. a part of it and it feels a lot less um what's the word i'm looking for like formal you know like mm -hmm. they're just friends that's that's mm -hmm. there to hang out too so i love i love watching the characters roam yeah yeah that is it is pretty awesome you're just like walking around you like look around over the shoulder just like huh and then you turn like, around and then you turn back around and they're gone and you're like what yeah, like peter <laughs> pan i pretty sure it was just peter pan that just like ran past me yeah like <laughs> Yeah, super exactly. <laughs> so, um, for each of you, question for each of you, um, how many how many friends do you have? Like all year round, or just like in a typical like non holiday season? Just in a typical uh, non holiday season. We may uh, jump into holidays later, but non holiday. Uh, three, three, three consistently non holiday. Wow, whoa! And <laughs> what about you, Nicole? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Current, currently, I have two. When I go through my ten years, um, there's a lot. <laughs> there's two, three, four, five, eight. Jeez. Eight over my my ten year span. Um, okay. Nine, <laughs> nine over my ten year span. But currently, I got I got two friends. <laughs> Yeah. I've, I've had a fallout with the rest of them. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it happens. You know, it's like some they get yeah. the big head, you know, conceited. Exactly. And, you know, Literally a big head. So, you know, contract dispute. Um, but, <laughs> okay. Well, that's so this is, this is, this is kind of bringing me to, into something interesting because, you know, things change, friends change, the number of them, some are consistent. Um, I think I'll, I think I'll try to bring it back to the beginning of it all, you know, the beginning of it all. So what actually like drew you to, you know, working for the company in general? I mean, obviously like we all grew up with it, but in this specific sense, sometimes there are like certain motivations that like kind of bring you to even like, you know, seeing the ad or something like that. And then saying like, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to audition i'm gonna i'm gonna try, I'm gonna try for it and see what happens mm -hmm. i mean what was going through your head i'll start with you bryant uh i've uh i've always been uh like a disney kid that was it was the like summer vacation that my family my mom was really good about budgeting and so um you know after the school year ended um we would we would always have a time where we would come and visit disneyland um, for a few days and then we would go home and that was kind of like our deal. Cause I'm from central California. So I'm not like super mm -hmm. local to Southern California. Um, so it was always, uh, it was always a place that we would come and visit. And there's, there's one story that sticks out, uh, specifically because it was when we were visiting, I think I was maybe 18 at the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was it was when it was around the time that Frozen had come out. They had the location in Fantasyland, like Ooh. just to like the right or left of the carousel, depending on which uh, side you're on, next to the Red Rose right. Tavern. We just met them, and I was like, "Man, that'd be so fun to do that." Um, and my mom was just kind of like, "Well, let's ask." And we asked a custodial cast member, uh, and we're like, "Hey, you know, uh, oh, hang on, my cat's getting all tangled up in my freaking cord. Piss off, Gizmo." <laughs> Uh, I was going to ask which one it was, but yeah, you know I mean? the, the the troublemaker. Mm -hmm. um, and so I asked him, I was like, Hey, you know, like, I'm really interested in wanting to, to do this. Like, how do I get this job? And uh, he was just like, Oh, everybody tries to do that job. You, you probably won't get it. I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Well, there goes that dream. I'm going to just move <laughs> on with my life. Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't until I um, started dating my now fiance uh, that, I figured out how to audition. Um, mm -hmm. And so 
I was working at, I was actually working at Universal at the time. Uh, I worked there for almost a year. And so she showed me the audition page. And so I would scour it. And the first two auditions I went to were parade auditions. Um, I think mm -hmm. it was um, Viva Navidad when it was like going to be introduced. And I made it past the first cut, which was super surprising to me because I would not consider myself a dancer. I'd consider myself a mover who can pick up mm -hmm. choreography, but I'm not a, a dancer. Like, I don't know any of the dance terminologies. Um, and I feel like that's like that wall for me to consider myself a dancer. And the next one was the Christmas Fantasy Parade, uh, which I immediately got cut. I They probably remembered me and they're like, oh, no. Mm -mm, take <laughs> Uh, and then the next audition that I went to was um, a lookalike uh, audition. And so that's what I I was able to get, fortunately. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I've, I've been working there ever since. Oh, nice. That's a cool yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it back to Universal. That's where I am currently. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm currently. I'm actually, I'm actually a performer now there, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, fun, fun. yeah, yeah, super fun. My other job, which is pretty much like a liaison to <laughs> the other characters and stuff. Um, but yeah, that was a cool story. Nicolette, now it's your time to shine. <laughs> Perfect. So, same thing. I was a Disney kid growing up, um, had a past growing up because I was definitely more local to Disneyland. So, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I try, I try to remember because I see, you know, my daughter, I have a toddler as well as the little one. Mm -hmm. And she loves, uh, obviously I'm raising her to love Disney. Um, and there's times when she'll see pictures and she'll call me out. And I'm like, no, like that's so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, great. Like she's only two, you know, like how, how do I keep this going until like, I'm ready to like, okay, you're right. You know? <laughs> um, and I tried to remember like, when, when was that moment for me? And I can't, I can't remember like when that mm -hmm. switch in my head happened. But mm -hmm. I do remember the first time, also very specifically, that I was like, this is what I want to do. I was watching Fantasmic, and Mickey went up um, to do the finale and was shooting fireworks behind him. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that's what I want to do. And this is before I knew how anything worked and that I, you know, Mickey is a, is a little itty bitty thing. Mm -hmm. um, because that was my first dream was to <laughs> help Mickey Mouse on top of the mountain at Fantasmic. Um, <laughs> And so it's just kind of something like I knew, like, okay, I want to work at Disneyland. I don't know what, like, I want to perform there, though. So straight, I remember, like, in high school being like, that's, you know, I want to also do personal musical theater. But until I get, you know, my foot in the door there, Disneyland, like, that's where I'm going. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So it was always, like, my goal. And I went to my very first audition. I was still 17. I think I just graduated high school. Um, and I was there, they kept me for nine hours. It, it was like, I've never seen an audition like this since mm -hmm. it was where they literally auditioned for all Disney characters, all height. It was insane. It was like the longest, again, I was there nine hours. They were looking for, I, I still to this day, I'm like, what was that? Literally everybody villains. Um, like now they'll be like, we're looking for these three characters, you know, like, but this was literally everybody. Like I saw somebody that was reading a script that sounded very much like Jack Skellington, you know, and then there was somebody reading a script that sounded like Mad Hatter. Like it was truly just everybody. Like it was so strange. Um, and I made it all the way to the very end where they were like, you know, the character we're looking at you for, we don't need right now, but like, we're going to keep you in our pool. You know, this was mm -hmm. back then. And I was like, okay, you know, like 17, I was like, oh my God, like success. I was so like excited. <laughs> that was it. Like I made Nailed it, it, you know, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Literally like, <laughs> and then, um, Little did, you know, pretty soon my little 17 year old self was like, oh, this isn't that easy. Like, you know, because then mm -hmm. another audition rolled around and I was like, well, I'll go again. And then like, it wasn't as successful. And so mm -hmm. it took 18 months of auditions to finally say we're offering you a job. Um, and it was for Sculpted at the time. And at the time I was like, I just want to work here. I don't care what I'm going to do. You know, I just want to perform. So mm -hmm. I was super excited. And I got to do that for two years. And um, I just remember feeling very, you know, they would pull me in to read for different lookalike characters and then I would never get it. And it was just so discouraging. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I feel like I'm not growing. Like, I, you know, two years isn't that long. But when 
I feel like you're getting teased a little bit, you know, with mm-hmm. like, oh, let's pull you in for this and let's have you, like, let's ask you to come audition for this. It was like really frustrating. And so I saw an online audition for Disney World. Um, again, nobody that they listed characters and I was like, I definitely cannot do those, but I'm going to send my stuff in anyway because maybe one day there's going to be a character that I'm going to fit and they're going to remember me. And that is literally exactly what happened because this was before a certain princess was even out Mm -hmm. and I got a call back and I was like what like I don't look like those characters and they had told me like they had gotten back to me they sent me like a very generic script and we're like you know she's not out yet like but we're you know starting to cover our grounds this was back in 2016 so I was like oh okay Mm -hmm. and then I didn't hear anything and you know there was a lot of back and forth and I was persistent though I was emailing and being like I will not let you forget about me like (laughs) you need to and I also never had any um desire to move to Florida I had been to Disney World a couple of times and I was like this place is so hot why would anybody ever want to work here like Mm -hmm. live here this is awful um and then little old me got a job opportunity and I was like, I'm the, I love Florida. What? Like, <laughs> I'm actually a huge Florida fan. <laughs> so there I was and packing up my, my little Kia soul and I uh, moved, moved to Florida and got to live out there for, uh, I live, I lived out there for just under two years, but I worked for Disney world as seasonal for another two years. So total four years mm. I was in a uh, Disney world cast member. So yeah, and then flip flop one more audition because I've worked for the company three times. <laughs> was an online audition. This is still they were doing online auditions because you know COVID was mm-hmm. settling down, and um, I sent in a dance reel. Um, I had done like a dance show in Florida, but I had never done dance. You know, they didn't want to let me grow here. Is what it felt like. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like, well, I'll just submit and we'll see what happens. And um, with COVID, casting switched out, which could have been like was the game changer for me which is just like it just shows that there's some people that are just gonna not see it in you and there's others that are and so Mm -hmm. um for years because even when I when I moved back from Florida I reached out to casting and they were I was like this is what I got to do in Florida can I come do it here and they were like no and I was like (laughs) okay no all right (laughs) Right, literally. Right. They were like, you would have to re-audition. Leave the company and then re-audition. Oh, and I was my like, gosh. I'm not going to do that. Like, I have mm-hmm. now six years under my belt. I'm not going to quit. Yeah. And so it was, it was It was. a frustrating ride. But finally, somebody gave me a chance here in parades. And the rest is history. So. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a movie. <laughs> yeah. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. <laughs> but a good one quite the journey quite the journey so um it always goes back to this because this is performers wanted and this is we always talk about you know a little occurrence that happened about four years ago um the yeah the 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 pandy the panda (laughs) you know um (laughs) and obviously like it's like rough and it's been the fact that i know specifically you know at universal a whole attraction got dropped um pretty much like right before it happened everyone was like what what's going on what's what's going on um so uh with you guys kind of being like integral parts to that like um was it just pretty much like everyone just pretty much just have to hang tight and just see what happens or you know like was there like any alternative anything like that or just how like what was going on with with you guys there um yeah it was it was pretty much the (laughs) the hang tight sort of mentality Mm -hmm. um i was i was hosting in the royal hall when the news started dropping Mm -hmm. um like they dropped it dropped on twitter and like we were in uh we were in one of the like get ready break room areas and uh everyone's like oh my gosh oh my gosh you know disneyland's closing disneyland's closing i was like hang on hang on like where where's this information coming from and they're like twitter i was like okay you can't like (laughs) you gotta take it with a grain of salt like anybody could post anything on twitter um Mm -hmm. and they're like no it was the disney blogs and i was like oh okay that's actually a little bit more serious Mm -hmm. i was like well my break's over so i'm gonna go sit on that while helping (laughs) people (laughs) and we're, so I was going through the hall in the different spots, hosting, helping out, and then there was this lady 
who is like talking on her Apple Watch and just mm-hmm. talking at like the loudest volume before it's yelling. And she's like, I don't know if Disneyland's going to close early. I don't know. And she comes up to me and she goes, is Disneyland going to close early? I was like, ma'am, I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) He doesn't know. He doesn't know. And she's like walking through the hall (laughs) trying to meet these princesses screaming. So now all the the performers are like, what "What is happening? And I was like, this just dropped. I don't know. We haven't been told anything. And they closed down the hall, pulled all of us to the break room and said, Hey guys, so we're going to be closing, um, but it's only going to be two weeks. You know, uh, the schedules that are already out, you're going to be paid for. um, So we should be back in two weeks and it'll be fine. Just don't show up to work. And anytime anybody just says like, don't show up to work, you're fine. I still take it with a grain of salt because I don't want to miss any sort of anything that might go out. And then all of a sudden I'm getting punished for not showing up to work when Mm -hmm. there was something that went out uh so it was one of those of like we don't show up to work like (laughs) are we all gonna consecutively agree even if like we're just not for the two weeks okay um and then you know and then it just snowballed and next thing you know uh they're like we're keeping some cast members on payroll and some of them are getting furloughed and Mm -hmm. uh you know your benefits will still be intact even if you're furloughed which was really nice and really gracious um so that was super helpful and then uh you know and then it was like all right well we can't actually do this so um because i think it was it was paid for a while before like some of us reached furlough status Mm -hmm. um so we were paid for a little bit and i was like all right cool i'm calm and then a lot of people are like hey preemptively start filing with unemployment like get that paperwork going because because everybody's doing it it's going to get so backed up and I think it was at the two week mark that I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and start doing it. And then I think there was like maybe maybe a week or two where it was like, we'll still pay you out, you know, we'll still pay you for these couple of weeks. And then it got to the point where like we got I think it was like an email. They're like, Hey, everybody's being furloughed now. Only mm-hmm. um uh, essential employee employees are being kept. Um and I was like, Well, there it is, and uh, we were in we, we were in Fresno at the time, spay, uh, staying with um, Jocelyn's family, and so yeah, it was just chilling. And I was like, all right, cool. I had my laptop, got everything sorted out, and um, mm-hmm. you know, that's what happened for the next rest of the year. Yeah, similar thing, Nicolette. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so no, I was yeah. yeah. I was um, still a Disney World employee when COVID hit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what? so when I left Disney World, I was full-time when I went. When I left, I dropped to seasonal status because I still wanted to stay with the company. I wasn't ready, but I was ready to come home. Um, I wanted to go back to school. Uh, and I wanted to, you know, my long-term boyfriend was here. And he's not my husband. But I knew, like, we wanted to, like, you know, keep progressing in our relationship. And I was, like, kind of hard to do when I'm you know, across the country. So let me come home. But because Disneyland didn't want to take me back, um, I was like, okay, let me go seasonal. And seasonal over there was perfect for me because you only have to work 150 hours a year. So Mm -hmm. on my school breaks, I would just spend the whole summer back in Florida, work like a, you know, like there was literally no tomorrow. I would work every single day for like two months straight, Mm -hmm. get my hours, and then I'd be set for the, like I'm still with the company. I could come and get in, Disneyland for free like so it's just like mm-hmm. you know I got to see all my old friends back in Florida it was just a, a good scenario for me um so I was living here but when COVID started to hit it was like January of 2020 so I was back over there I took my winter break in Florida and I would see like some news articles about it and I was like dang this is crazy um but like you know not thinking anything of it because it was like when I first started at Disneyland measles like was a thing and mm. um it was like, okay, so it's just going to be like one of those things that's like kind of spreads and then whatever. Um, but also like in my gut, I just had a feeling. I kept telling my, she was my roommate when I lived out there and she would let me crash on our couch when I would come um, do my hours. And so I was like, I feel like this might be my last time working here. Like, I feel like I'm not gonna, cause I was getting married in 2022. 
which is like, that's a whole other thank you COVID mm-hmm. for <laughs> putting me through all that. Um, so I was like, I don't know if it's because of my, like, you know, I'm getting married that I'm just not going to want to come back, you know, like, but I feel like this might be my last time. And she was like, no, like, you'll come back. Like, you know, my husband did not, he was like, if you want to go back while we're married, like, I don't care, you know, like, that's what you want to do. So she was like, you know, he's not going to like be upset if you come for a month. And I was like, I know. And I was like, but I just feel, I don't know. Like my gut tells me like, this might be it. So I remember like working my last shifts and being like, okay, that might've been it. Like there was just something. And then sure enough, you know, like I'd fly home and a couple months later, they're like the pandemic. And I was like, that was it. That was literally it. Like I'm not going back. And I would like go and like, you know, again, my husband was like, no, like, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Like you don't have to go back. And I was like, I don't think so. Like I just knew it. I was like, I need to be naked. But I, I feel it like, um, and I remember, knowing like so they were kind of like there was word you know you can't like brian said you can't really trust anything but there was word on the street that they were trying to it's nay seasonal like cast, mm. not like cast members but the status of seasonal mm. and so i was like this is this is their window like this is when they're gonna get to do it like you know if they don't want to do seasonal anymore they're gonna use this as the excuse and sure enough i got a call and there was no furlough for seasonal it was just straight up you're being laid off like mm. um we're, we're yeah, we don't. And I remember just being crushed. I was just like on the phone and just like crying because now it's, I'm six years in with the company and it's just like, wow, like this is not, I wanted to leave when I was ready. You know, like I know, <laughs> I know I can't do this job forever, but like, I hate that I was leaving mm-hmm. on their terms and not mine. Um, mm-hmm. And I was just gutted. And um, there was severance pay, which worked. I thought I was like, I'm not going to get anything. I'm seasonal. Like, but they went based mm-hmm. off of like, um, your most recent paychecks and because I was working every day for two months straight my nice. paychecks were fat so when <laughs> severance pay rolled around 14 weeks of severance pay again just fat paychecks that I was like I feel like I cheated the system here but I I deserve it so <laughs> I used those yeah I used those fat paychecks and I jumped on a plane back to Florida to say my goodbyes to all my friends and to Disney World because I was like Dane like I'm in a different season of my life where like, you know, if I wasn't at that point when I had gone back and got laid off, I was married. We've pulled off a COVID wedding, which was again, a whole thing in itself. Mm -hmm. Um, And I knew like, this isn't just something I can just come back to anymore. You know, like I'm just in a different place. And so that was really hard. And then um, I knew I was like, okay, I can either just be done or I can try to go back with Disneyland. But the whole thing was like, I just, I don't want to leave when I'm not ready, you know, like, I don't mm-hmm. want to be done when I'm like, when my heart still yearns to perform and like, I want to do more. Um, so that was how COVID ended for me, ended that journey for me. And luckily, um, I had to re-audition, but I got to re-audition and for Disneyland and, and get my job back. But yeah, mm-hmm. it was, it definitely felt like the end. And then, you know, and then I had a kid and I was like, they're not going to want me, even though like there's a ton of parents <laughs> that were to Disneyland, but I was like, mm-hmm. they're not going to want me to perform. I have a old kid, but luckily, <laughs> um, they, they didn't know that. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they, they didn't know. Tell. Yeah. <laughs> they know. You couldn't, you yeah. couldn't tell. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> couldn't tell. Yeah. Even like yes. right now, like right now with like your second one, I just like, I still remember like you announcing that you were having another one and then now she's here and it was like but did you though i will i'm thankful for that <laughs> <laughs> i'm thankful for that but but yeah it's and i remember like when i auditioned for um to come back to disneyland it was a parade audition and it was online and so i was like perfect like i have a dance reel from you know pre-baby, pre-COVID, which maybe mm-hmm. wasn't the smartest thing because I was not in the same shape. Like, <laughs> I literally, it had been two, I, not only had it been two years since I, like, trained in dance, but I also had a kid. So, like, mm-hmm. me dancing was not the same as that reel, but, like, in my head, I was like, whatever, let's just send it. Well, it worked, and they wanted me to come in and dance now, and I was like, oh, no! Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have not danced in years. And so I was stressing, and I was, like, telling my friend, I don't want to go. Literally, my daughter's singing, do you want to build a snowman outside of the door? Because I want to open it. <laughs> that's so cute. Yeah, that's her thing. When we don't open the door, she'll start singing, do you want to build a snowman? But, um, yeah, so I was like, dang, like, this is scary. I'm not in any kind of shape to 
dance, but I, you know, I luckily had like two weeks. So I just like started running and like getting my stamina up and I went and I do think the reel saved me because I also included Disney clips. Um, I was mm -hmm. smart about it to show like, hey, I already do this mm -hmm. somewhere else. Like, please don't just click away on my, um, so I was strategic about it. And mm -hmm. yeah, luckily I think that online audition set like now they're back to i think fully every once in a while they'll do like a online submission but mostly they're back to like full in person but i think mm -hmm. the online was what really saved me <laughs> because <laughs> i was definitely not in shape to be uh busting some batmas out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you're there though you're there though yes. and extremely talented um what okay so we we talked a lot about like the uh audition process and you know what is like you know on the job let's uh let's go into this uh advice section right here so i'll start with you this time nicolette um so someone is starting to perform and wants to perform at disney is there any like tips you can give them any like anything that maybe they you know that could help them sort of like calm their nerves about it because i know it's kind of a big deal and a lot of folks when they are like looking into like performing for disney this is like something they're super excited about but also super nervous about because it's mm -hmm. disney it raised us you know um yeah. what would you what would you tell that kid that person um well you know like as as cliche as it sounds like they truly want to see your personality like they want to see a personality like you look at these characters and they're all whether they're you know good or evil like they all have a big personality so they want to see that and they want to see you transform and i know especially for like look like i remember myself as a 17 year old going on youtube and being like look like i and like they would teach you how to do your makeup for it and like now now getting to do it and now doing a bunch of look like auditions i'm like don't listen to any of that mm -hmm. because it does not matter like it it's literally does not matter it's, all it's, it's all, yeah literally if they mm -hmm. like you you're gonna get pulled you know like if you show them what you've got like you're gonna get pulled because i went to an audition with my hair done makeup done in a dress all like, a certain way um didn't get pulled i went one day like after a shift when i was working at disney um in leggings a tank top and like my hair and a ponytail got pulled so like literally if they if it's fitting um if it's you're what they're looking for at the time like it's gonna work out but like mm -hmm. don't think you know i need to do my makeup like this character i need to dress i need to disney bound like none of that none of that matters mm -hmm. you know like if if they're gonna need you and love you like it's gonna be based off of what you have to offer and um also what their need is you know there's going to be times where you know you go in and it's just not what they need right now and you come back and then it is like you you definitely can't be i know i felt super discouraged a lot of the times but now looking back it's just like it just wasn't my time you know like it just mm -hmm. wasn't my time to step into whatever you know i wanted to step <laughs> into and um yeah ironically <laughs> it became my time <laughs> right if you know you know um and yeah, I think it's just truly like, again, cliche. I remember if I was 17 and hearing be yourself, I would have been like, Ugh, like, that's not what I want to hear. I want, I want the secrets, you know, but like, mm -hmm. that really is what it comes down to. Like, just show them how amazing you are as a performer and what you've got. And, you know, there's times when I see at like, when I would see at our, when I finally went in person for the parade audition, I would see people that maybe weren't as technical as some of the others, but they were so fun to watch mm -hmm. that they kept making it. They kept making it round after round because they were just like such a joy. And like, yeah, maybe their technique wasn't, you know, as good as some of the others, but like you couldn't help but watch them because they were just such a joy to watch. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I think like they can tell like you are a performer and that's what we need. Um, yeah. And things like parade site, your technique is going to matter um for some roles but there's others where it's like you know yeah like you're such a good performer they're gonna find somewhere to put you you know like they want you mm -hmm. um so be yourself is is gonna be my my cliche advice yes yes i love that advice though i love that advice because <laughs> so many people will not be themselves going into right? these auditions yeah no. i think when you know there's something they're looking for like you try to mold into that and it's like well you never, you know, like I said, I auditioned for Disney World and they said what they were looking for. I was not that, but mm -hmm. I submitted anyway. And 
I ended up catching their eye for something else. So mm -hmm. um, you just, you never know. You just got to stay true to who you are as a performer. Very well said. Brian, what about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, Nicolette did a really good job in kind of encompassing, you know, be yourself. Because um, a lot of it can't is just luck, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say, like, if you if you were able to get through the processes, um, being able to think on your feet, right? Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of everything that we do is thinking on your feet. You know, there, there's there's ways to to work it, but having feeling comfortable and being able to like somebody ask you a question and you being able to you know if you if you did your research especially if you're going for a specific character um just having like okay how would that like how would that character respond but that's like it's later in the audition process and a lot of it is just you know kind of being yourself and and really just being lucky and fitting the look that they're looking for mm -hmm. um but yeah so be yourself and then also just be willing to have fun you know that's part of mm -hmm. the big personality just have fun with it you know it's just like any other audition you know you you either fit it or you don't and as long as you have fun with it and you know don't take it personally um mm -hmm. it that's the best way to approach uh auditions mm -hmm. awesome yeah yeah and i'm going to say this because this is probably self-explanatory you guys definitely recommend being performers at disney it's a it's a good fix for me <laughs> anyway it's like it's a good mm -hmm. fix for in between you know doing uh shows outside of disney mm -hmm. um so i could still perform i could still feel like i'm putting on a show um so i i still enjoy it to this day mm -hmm. yeah yeah i i agree it's just um i think there there can be a level of burnout and i think part of like mm -hmm. when i lived in Florida, I was full time, um, and that was also a huge uh, factor in me dropping to seasonal. Was the magic was was burning out for me, and so mm -hmm. there was a point where I was like, "It is not fair for me to be here, and it is not fair for sorry, it is not fair for the guests coming to meet me because I feel like I'm wearing it on my face. I'm not enjoying mm -hmm. myself anymore, mm -hmm. and I knew that that's when I needed to step away for a little bit." But I wasn't ready. I was like, but I do still love this job. I'm just doing it too much right now. I just need a mm -hmm. break. Mm -hmm. um, so going seasonal was perfect for me because I was able to come to terms with like, okay, I still love what I do. I just can't do it as much right now. Um, mm -hmm. I need like for my my mental health I needed to, um, you yeah. know, take a, take a step back. But I knew that like I cared about the magic. And I feel like not to like diss other performers, but I'd, I'll see other performers where they don't care, you know, like to mm -hmm. still maintain that mm -hmm. um, magic for the guests. And I'll just see them and I'm like, I know I can see that you're not enjoying this anymore. Like it's time to take a little break, you know, like, and I knew that I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be that bitter, mm -hmm. you know, um, person that people were coming to meet. And so I took a step back and was able to miss my job, you know, like was able mm -hmm. to be like, oh yeah, like I love, I would like to see people going to me and I'd be like, oh, I love what I do. I just needed to take a little step back. So it does, but that's with anything, you know, with anything, you do too much of it and you get like, oh, so <laughs> it's still yeah. a wonderful place to be. Um, I just needed to take that step back and take care again of my mental health and jump back in. And, and now I feel like I have a good balance. And like he said, being able to do other things and um, perform at the same time it, like, here at, at uh, Disneyland is just like, it's it's a perfect mix um, mm -hmm. of, you know, like he said, getting that fix of performing and then I get to come home and be a mom. That's that's what I'm doing right now is uh, I get to go play dress up and then come play dress up <laughs> in a different way yeah. <laughs> here at home. Definitely. But, yeah. 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 So every, every theme park has its own individual hook, you know, like with like, Six Flags, it's the insane roller coasters. You know, Universal pulls the curtain back so you can kind of see how, like, you know, their projects have been made. Um, for Disney, it is the magic, and the magic is made by uh, the stories that are told by these characters, and the characters are you guys. You guys make the trip. You guys make the trip. Yeah. Like, you know, they can get on a ride, but, you know, they're going to be in a line for a few hours if they don't have a pass or anything like that but for the most part you know when i see people like their eyes the most wide 
it is when you guys are on site and it's just like oh i i know that character that character is real to me um mm-hmm. so you know what you guys do is very very important very very important i don't know if you have uh if you ever met this uh particular young man named thomas love thomas <laughs> yes he uh he is definitely a joy um Thank he comes you. to visit us too at universal uh quite often so like every time we see him we're just like oh time, time. and he's just one example of how like amazing you guys make the the trip you know mm-hmm. um so i'm commanding you guys and you know your fellow you know, fellow cast members uh wherever they are whether they're uh lookalikes they're singers if they're in the parade or anything like that yeah that's that's where the magic happens mm-hmm. um so yeah brian we're gonna folks find you if they want to become a fan of you brian melton um yeah i uh uh my instagram is just brian melton um i uh i will give uh, a little warning i don't post as much on my instagram uh i'm very slacking in the uh, social media department <laughs> mm-hmm. but um hopefully as i develop more in the entertainment industry there might be more uh mm-hmm action on my social medias you know get promotions for the the projects that i'm working on so mm-hmm. um yeah that's that's a place to find me uh instagram at bryant milton yes bryant and i might be doing a project soon i'm not going to say what it is right now but like you might I'm see very excited fate. yes because we've been talking about this for like a couple of years now at this point uh mm-hmm. we've been talking about this but now it's it's something that we're developing right now um and Hopefully, I get to finally put Nicolette into a <laughs> project because you have my voice and a couple there. <laughs> yes, I have your voice, which is an amazing voice. We got to get the, the <laughs> got to get the rest of you in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was for good reason. Um, yes. Speaking of which, if someone wants to become a fan of Nicolette Melody, where do we find you? At Nicolette Melody, that's where you'll find me <laughs> on Instagram. If you like, right now, if you like pictures of uh, cute babies, that's that's what you'll find a lot of on my Instagram until I decide I'm ready to go back to work. <laughs> yes, yes, so that's great content, though. It's great yes. content. Oh yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> one of the one of my favorite things is when you told your oldest that she was going to become an older sister and she started to like frown. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was our, our gender reveal that we did like just us as a family. And yeah, we like pulled it out and told her like, it's a girl. And she was like, it's a bit all sad frown. <laughs> <We're> like, <"Uh-oh." laughs> oh, she loves her sister thing. though. They're, they're little besties, but yeah, yeah. she was not understanding and bitch sad about it <laughs> yeah it it happens it happens but <laughs> thank you both for for coming on to this show um and doing this first bit uh for the the theme park performers you know hopefully i can have you guys back on here either individually or when we like bring in more theme park performers for different theme parks and just sort of uh kind of you know swap stories and see you know what happens um yeah. And look out for two of these faces. Look out for two of these faces <laughs> somewhere on stage or screen if we can make it happen. You know? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So definitely. this has been another fun episode of Performance Wanted. We're signing out now, and we are out. <laughs>